Radio TV Phono Nut here, and we have another unboxing to do. And I've got a feeling this is going to be a disaster because I hear stuff rattling around inside. And based on the size of the box, I'd say this is another one where it's just uh, stuffed in the box and sent on its way. This came from Birmingham, Alabama, which is roughly three hours away. But, you know. That's, that doesn't mean that something can't get damaged or destroyed if it's not packed right. So, let's pop the tape and see what we got. Oh wow, they did use a minute bit of bubble wrap. And some crumpled up newspaper. Let me pause this and get a picture of this. I'm doc photo documenting this every step of the way in quick in case I have to file a claim against them okay what is this the power cord I hope all I'm hearing it rattled is a tube that tube or tubes that come out of the socket so what do we have here a uh, sear silver tone reel to reel tape recorder from about 1955 or whatever and something came loose here All right, we have this tape reel here, take up reel. Well, maybe that's what I heard rattling right, right around was the tape reel, so maybe it didn't get hurt. Okay, that's just the head access cover that you remove for cleaning, and as you can tell, this one needs cleaning in the worst kind of way, and this pinch roller looks to have a divot in it where somebody left it in, left it in gear for decades uh, that's going to have to be replaced or rebuilt well, of course this is a mono machine and i think it only runs at three and three quarters ips uh built in the mid 50s by crescent uh, cosmetically it's in pretty good shape just needs a good cleaning and you know there's some paint damage on the metal here but nothing nothing too bad I notice there's still a piece of cardboard in the lid here. That's probably the protective cardboard that came in it from the factory that they never removed. I don't, I don't suspect whoever packed this went to the trouble to form a piece of cardboard to put in the lid there. Okay, here's the underside. As you can see, big power transformer, 6x5 rectifier tube. 6v6 output tube back over here i think this is probably a 12 ax7 this is a 5079 and you can see they have it mounted on rubber grommets to help prevent microphonics because when you have a such a high gain stage there any slight vibration will often cause microphonics in the tube so they prevent that by isolating the tube socket on grommets and that will help dampen any vibration big ac general industries motor and i can see the belts here are shot this one's all cracked and dry rotten and this one's very loose here so yeah this is going to need all new rubber i'm sure all right, here we are with the speaker grill removed and a look under the chassis and much to my surprise, it looks like a good many ceramic disc capacitors in here. I see a few wax paper capacitors, but not many. And let's pull the speaker out and see what's under there. All right, here's a better look under the chassis with the speaker removed. It's nice of them to give us ample speaker leads here so we can get the speaker out of the way for servicing the chassis and as far as paper capacitors all i see is this one cap and then we have an electrolytic probably a cathode bypass capacitor and then we have the main can electrolytic here but 
probably won't be too much to servicing this amplifier and the speaker is date coded looks like the 48th week of 54 so this tape recorder was probably made in early 55 so it looks like we have three rubber belts the main capstan belt and then a belt for each spindle the supply reel and then the take up reel and then of course the pinch roller that has the divot in it from being left in gear for probably the past 50 plus years and it looks like there's some rubber motor mounting grommets that are rock solid and need to be replaced so yeah just like with the phonographs uh, replacing the rubber parts is the most expensive venture in today's world Hopefully the head, we can clean it and salvage that. I um, really haven't been into reel-to-reel -reel recorders too much over the years. In fact, I'm trying to remember, have we ever featured a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder on this channel? I really don't think we have. And this is not something I have time to venture into today, but maybe one day when things settle down and I get caught up, we'll we'll dive into this it won't be high fidelity by any sense of the word but it should be a nice little project that we can have some fun with and preserve a piece of history at the same time and once we get it going it it might actually perform better than some might realize